let's dig a little deeper. The three cornerstones of UN Agenda 21 Sustainable Development are economy, ecology, and social equity, sometimes called the three E's. Economic collapse creates a chain of events, but on a micro level, county, city, there is a marked reduction in revenue for maintenance of services. Loss of services to outlying areas means, for example, roads not being maintained to rural and suburban areas. Roads not being maintained to those areas, schools not being supported in those areas, law enforcement, fire, social services, not being supported in those areas, means, a gradual movement into the denser city centers. Add to that the increased cost of gasoline, manipulated, and the higher cost of energy, manipulated, to heat and cool statistically larger homes, and you have more pressure to leave rural and suburban areas. Reduction of energy usage is key. Smart growth or new urbanism in redevelopment areas is the supposed answer. Smaller units, attached condos, little or no parking, few private cars. More eyes on the street. Redevelopment projects are one implementation arm of the UN plan, and include rezoning of huge sections of your cities to smart growth zones. This physical manifestation of UN Agenda 21 is social engineering paid for with your property tax dollars. These areas then have their property taxes diverted away from your services and into the pockets of a few developers and bond brokers for decades. Result? Bankrupt cities and counties. In addition to these factors, ecologically motivated regulation makes rural suburban development prohibitive. From stream creek ditch protection to watershed protection, to bayland inland rural corridor prohibitions, to increased species protection, lists are growing, the use of land is greatly limited. Water well monitoring and loss of water rights reduce the opportunity for living outside of cities. Wildlands programs that prohibit roads and trails into rural areas while supposedly protecting them with conservation easements increase the loss of our food source independence. The sale of development rights to agricultural land trusts that restrict farmers and ranchers from using their lands and therefore make it impossible to farm for more than one more generation endanger our ability to feed ourselves. Add to this the pressure from ICLEI climate protection campaigns to reduce our energy usage to pre-1985 levels and increased regulations on industry, and you have the perfect storm for loss of jobs and greater dependence on other countries for goods. The push for neighborhood gardens and urban gardens is a manipulation. You can't grow enough food to do more than provide a minor supplement to your purchased food, and most people are not farmers. Dedication, knowledge, inexpensive water, good quality soil not contaminated with lead, as is most urban soil, and sufficient land to provide economies of scale, are required to provide food. Otherwise you're just plain. As the population becomes more and more urbanized and less able to provide food or necessary products, more people will be dependent on the government for housing, food, and other basic necessities. Government itself becomes dependent on grants and loans with requirements attached. In this way, policymakers are influenced and pressured by the corporatocracy. Public or private partnerships favor some businesses over others and completely unbalance the playing field. Independent businesses go bankrupt. Poverty works its way into the middle class. Social equity, another cornerstone of Agenda 21 comes in here. As a major leveler, the loss of money, land, food, and energy independence will bring the US into social equity with the poor countries. This is a goal of Agenda 21. In 1976, the UN Conference on Human Settlements, Habitat I, stated in its preamble that private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth, and therefore contributes to social injustice. Public control of land use is therefore indispensable. Think about the implications of that when we're discussing eminent domain, land use restrictions, and conservation easements. You might have thought that social equity would mean that the poor would be raised up. Nope. There are elements of the social equity concept that block development of dirty industry or anything that would be bad for the community in a low-income area. Low-income areas should not be viewed as a dumping ground for pollution. Yes, I agree. So do you, probably. But it's the green mask. Behind that is the removal of all industry from all areas. The only thing being built in low-income areas is low-income housing, with redevelopment funds. Warehousing of the poor is the result. Health will suffer, presumably healthcare will suffer, and nutrition will suffer. Psychological problems, stress from living in tight smart growth areas with other under underemployed people, and crime will result. Community-oriented policing, under the Department of Justice, will encourage, if not require, people to watch their neighbors and report suspicious activity. More activity will be identified as crime, such as obesity, smoking, drinking when you have a drinking problem, name-calling, leaving lights on, neglect, in someone's perception, of children, elderly, and pets, driving when you could ride a bike, breaking a curfew, and failure to do mandatory volunteering. 
the community will demand more law enforcement to restore order, and more rules and regulations will ensue. The lines between government and non-governmental groups will blur more and more as unelected local groups make policy decisions using the Delphi technique to manufacture consensus. The Chinese and Russian models are instructive in what you can expect under communitarianism. Read Nian Cheng's Life and Death in Shanghai, and Alexander Solzhenitsyn's The Gulag Archipelago for real-world examples. The War on Terror is a communitarian plan designed to terrorize you. You can see that the groundwork for this has been laid and is being implemented throughout the nation. When you create deep dependence and then withdraw assistance, the result is chaos and poverty. Propaganda infuses our culture with messages that there are just a few winners and many losers, that we are killing the earth and time is running out, that prosperity is an anachronism and detrimental to life, that individual freedom is selfish and injures those who are less free. These messages are crafted to shame and pressure you and to create a sense of urgency that impairs your ability to reason clearly. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. Although there are even earlier indications that the United Nations sought to control and use and manage populations, 1976, Habitat 1, the precursor to the 1992 Rio Earth Summit, was a similar meeting of the same commission in 1987, the World Commission on Environment and Development, called the Brundtland Commission, that initially defined the term sustainable development. In its Our Common Future report to the United Nations, the Brundtland Commission defines sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. All that remained was to state that our current activities and means of living were compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs and then decide what to do about it. After Our Common Future was presented to the UN General Assembly in 1987, the World Commission on Environment and Development, Brundtland Commission, was tasked with designing strategies for achieving sustainable development by the year 2000. At the Rio Earth Summit in 1992, the Commission, chaired by Maurice Strong, came back with Agenda 21. There is no aspect of our lives that is not covered by this document. The 40 chapters are divided into four sections. Section 1. Social and Economic Dimensions. Section 2. Conservation and Management of Resources for Development. Section 3. Strengthening the Role of Major Groups. Section 4. Means of Implementation. You can read it yourself on the United Nations website. Just put UN Agenda 21 in a search engine. Some of the most important information can be found in Chapter 7, Human Settlements, which is the foundation for sustainable communities, and in the last chapters where the technology and methods for implementation are discussed. The philosophical basis for much of UN Agenda 21 legislation and regulation is the precautionary principle. It's from the 1992 Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit and is Principle 15. The definition. The precautionary principle states that if an action or policy has a suspected risk of causing harm to the public or to the environment, in the absence of scientific consensus that the action or policy is harmful, the burden of proof that it is not harmful falls on those taking the action. It's sort of a guilty until proven innocent thing. Calling it a principle makes it a source of law in the European Union. A fun fact is that the EU has informally defined it, but they use it to craft their laws on food, technological development, trade, environmental and consumer protections. It is compulsory. Here in the US we call it the precautionary approach so as not to codify it as law, but it is still being used to develop policy. How do you like that? In the absence of proof that something is harmful, you're supposed to prove that it isn't. This is serious, think about climate change or global warming, or species impacts. William Clinton was elected president in November 1992, and six months later he issued Executive Order No. 12852, which created the President's Council on Sustainable Development, or PCSD. It first met in the summer of 1993, and continued until 1999. The members of the PCSD included cabinet secretaries for transportation, agriculture, education, commerce, housing and urban development, environmental protection agency, small business administration, energy, interior, and defense. Representing business were CEOs for Pacific Gas and Electric, Enron, Kenlay, BP Amico, and Dow Chemical, among others. Environmental organizations rounded out the balance with the Natural Resources Defense Council, Sierra Club, World Resources Institute, the Nature Conservancy, and the Environmental Defense Fund being the most notable. The PCSD immediately began laying the groundwork for implementing Agenda 21 in the United States. The goal was to change public policy to bring it into alignment with the new agenda for the 21st century. The PCSD formalized its recommendations in Sustainable America, a new consensus. 
we have never been the same since. One of the elements of a new rule of law is the creation of a new language to go with it. Called jargon, this new vocabulary has a different meaning for those in the know from what you would understand from just seeing or hearing those words. Nearly every profession has its jargon, but the implementers of UN Agenda 21 rely on the obscurity of their definitions to keep you from becoming alarmed. Livable, walkable, vibrant, bikeable, consensus, conversation, progressive, community, diversity, carbon footprint, smart, vision, green, stakeholders, regional, sustainable. Buzzwords and slogans are used as tags to manipulate you. When you hear jargon words like this you are being conditioned to support and accept the project or plan they're attached to without questioning it. These words, by their regular usage in the media and implied acceptance by your peers, tell you that something is popular. They are designer buzzwords. Jargon that has been created to help you feel that you belong to the masses, that you are doing something positive and good, and that you'll gain acceptance by participating. The best public relations people in the world are working on these terms, just for you. The word consensus for example, is defined in my dictionary as an opinion or position reached by a group as a whole. In the PCSD's list of vital elements to incorporate into their recommendations, they included this statement. We need a new collaborative decision process that leads to better decisions, more rapid change, and more sensible use of human, natural, and financial resources in achieving our goals. A new collaborative decision process. The new definition for consensus is the neutralization of expressed opposition. In the old way of doing things, the democratic way, an issue is put before the voters and they vote on it directly, or they have a representative who reviews the issues, debates them publicly, and then votes. If the voters are not satisfied with the outcome, they can initiate a referendum or vote out the representative. Sustainable America, a new consensus, does not allow for actual dissent. There can be no opportunity for failure in implementing Agenda 21. In fact, the cabinet secretaries reported that they could implement approximately two-thirds of the PCSD's recommendations administratively. However, it is not desirable that you notice that you are not being given a choice in the most important issues of your life, so you are given the illusion that you are making decisions for yourself. As with the previous video, example of the glasses of water and milk, this principle of taking two opposing points of view and mixing them to render a third, does not in fact represent your opinion. It might be said that it doesn't represent the other side either, but since the other side is running the meeting, you can be sure that the manipulation will result in their predetermined outcome. You'll find that the water never gets into the pitcher at all. The real meaning of consensus is to take away your voice and leave you feeling as if you are the only one who has some problem with the results. The President's Council on Sustainable Development incorporated the Delphi technique into its recommendations, so that more rapid change could be imposed on you through clever manipulation. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.